Welcome. Great to see you all. Uh, let's get started. Thank you for being here on time. I included some slides on the metaverse. Uh, please follow this keynote by Zuckerberg. We are moving towards this new model, elements of a metaverse. So make sure you develop skills uh, in this new business landscape. We will soon be having meetings with our avatars in this metaverse. So make sure you develop your skills in this space. You can also invest in non-fungible tokens and invest in this digital landscape. Today, we will have self-making studio. I'll talk about entrepreneurship and money. My message today is summarized in this article. Do not trust the system. Establish your own system. If I could summarize today's lecture in one sentence, this would be it. Do not ever trust the system. Establish your own system, wherever you are. This is the golden rule that I want you to go away. This is the core message that I will be giving you today. So let's go over today's themes. Let's go over it, reiterate each of them. I'll ask the question and you will respond all together, OK? Can we trust the global system? No. no. Yes. Shout, please. Can we trust capitalism? No. no. Can we trust corporations? No. no. Can we trust our educational systems? No. no. Can we trust <laughs> our universities? No, unfortunately, yeah? Because you need to take good care of yourself, your future, your career. The only thing that you should trust is yourself, your skill set, your mindset, okay? That's my message to you today. Can you trust your professor? No, no. you can only trust yourself, okay? That's my core message today, okay? The only person that you will trust is yourself. That's why you need to invest in your skill set, mindset, knowledge, skills. Yeah? You don't need any savers, heroes. Don't wait somebody to save your life. You will save your own lives. Okay? And I'll tell you how today. So it is critical to question the system that you are embedded in. It is critical to question authorities government. It is critical to question uh, politics. So you need to develop your own independence and power. How do you do that? Through money. You need to have financial independence. That's the best way to go forward in this life. That's why you need to think like entrepreneurs. You need to act like entrepreneurs uh, and achieve financial freedom wherever you are. So let's go over how to do that. I'll have some exercises for you. Remember this chart because it's so critical. Career ladder is broken. You need to develop your own assets. You need to learn how to make money. You need to think and act like an entrepreneur. So your goal must be building assets. Income always follows assets. If you want to generate income, you need to own assets. If you have money, you need to buy these assets. If you don't have money, then you need to create these assets through your imagination. Okay? So there are two ways to having assets. If you have money, you need to buy them, invest in them. Things like uh, buying a house. A house is an investment, an asset. Bitcoin, Ethereum, cryptocurrencies. You could buy investments, port portfolios, shares, shares of stocks of companies. These are all great investments in the future. If you have money, gold. Gold is a great investment. If you have money, you need to buy a mix of these, build a portfolio, okay? But if you don't have any money, 
then you need to create them. What can you create? Using your imagination, you can create your ebook, you can write a book, develop a course, develop music, you can build your YouTube channel, your TikTok, your Instagram brand, your products, services, your own business, business model, all of these things. Even if you don't have any money, you can do these things with zero money. As long as you have internet, computer. These people have created these media franchises. These are the most valuable media franchises in the world. All of them came from somebody's imagination. Pokemon, $92 billion. Star Wars, $65 billion. These are all billion, not million. Harry Potter, Marvel, you see? Barbie, all of them, Lord of the Rings. All of them are due to somebody's imagination. So use your imagination to create your own assets. These are some of the richest people on the planet. How did they become rich? They became rich through creating their own assets. Look at the list. George Lucas created Star Wars. He's a billionaire. Oprah created her own television. James Patterson wrote more than 200 books. J.K. Rowling created the Harry Potter empire. <coughs> Matt Groening created Simpsons. Stephen King created his empire of books, films, movies. So all of these people have created hundreds of content pieces over the years, and they became rich. So to become a Renaissance person, to become rich, you need to conduct your own experiments in 10 years. You should say, I will conduct 10,000 experiments in 10 years. That means you need to do new experiments every day. If you do this consistently, in 10 years, you'll be rich. This is how they did it. They are founders of Stripe. So you need to think like an entrepreneur, establish your own business. You live only once. You live only once. So you need to establish your own business. If you want to create something amazing, then realize that there will be some setbacks. It will suck. You will fail. We call this this valley of disappointment. Whenever you want to create something new, remarkable, you will enter this valley of disappointment, despair. Every hero goes through these struggles. Yeah? You'll also go through these struggles. Don't worry. Go over them. They will grow you. They will make you more resilient. They will make you tougher. So you should definitely fail. Without failure, you cannot be a hero. You need to fail a lot of times. Try a, a lot of times before you succeed. And that means you need to be anti-fragile. Really think long term. Think in terms of 10 years. If you start right now, you can be rich after 10 years, maybe 15 years. So you really need to think long term on this. Let's think long term. This documentary spans over 56 years. They shoot this every seven years. Which documentary is this? Anyone knows this? They shoot it every seven years. Anyone? Any guess? It's called Up. Up. It's a British documentary. They interviewed kids when they were seven. They revisited them when they were 14 and then 21. And then uh, 28, 35, they invited, uh, they interviewed these people every seven years. Okay? So this is a remarkable documentary. It's on YouTube. Watch it. <laughs>
was a really nifty idea. I didn't want to do it when I was 14, and I vowed I'd never do it now. But here I am. Hopefully I'll reach my half century next year and and I shall bow out. I suppose I have this ridiculous sense of loyalty to it, even though I hate it. And that's just such a contradiction, isn't it? <laughs> I don't want to answer those kind of questions. The first seven years have gone extremely quickly. We've just grown together. I don't think you really notice it. I mean, you still think you're the same. It's when, maybe when you pull a muscle, <laughs> That just reminds you that you're getting older. I always liked older people as I was growing up, funny enough. My ambition as a scientist is to be more famous for doing science than for being in this film, but unfortunately, Michael, it's not going to happen. Michael, up there's my old flats where I used to live in. I lived up there for 28 years. The memories I've got in here is unbelievable. <laughs> it's how a person, any person, how they change. It's not an absolute accurate picture of me, but it's a picture of somebody. So they did the last episode, I think, which was six to three. They did interview these people when they were six to three recently. And then the director died, unfortunately. And some of these people have also died, so Unfortunately, the documentary has come to an end, but you can watch the episodes on YouTube. So I want you to develop a long-term perspective about your life. Open your notebook and think about seven-year segments of your life and give them a title. So you'll draw it for seven years of your life, 8 to 14, 15 to 21, etc. Okay? Right now, where are you? Are you between 22 and 28 right now? Somewhere, yeah? So please give a title to each period in your life. Give it a title. What were major life events during every seven years? Think of places, cities, and people who were significant to you during each segment. And what was your major role, major job, or project during each segment? And how do you look forward? Think about the next seven years, and then the next seven years, and then the next seven. How will you transform yourself in the long term? What are your long term goals, dreams, wishes? I want you to capture them while you are writing. Imagine yourself, where will you be when you are, let's say, 36? When you are 43, when you are 50, where will you be? Imagine your life, your career. Where do you wish to be? Please capture those. Write down your reflections. Have a long-term perspective about your life. Capture your thoughts, wishes, dreams, reflections. Think about where you will be, you want to be in seven years, in 14 years, in 21 years. Where will you be? Why do we do it in seven years? Because in seven years, all the cells in your body, all of them are transformed. You will have totally new cells in seven years. 100% of your body will change in seven years. You will become a totally new person in seven years. So seven years is a long time to transform, reinvent yourself. So think about how you will reinvent yourself every seven years. Okay? Think about it.
And let me tell you, I transformed myself in just four years. I started transforming, reinventing myself during the pandemic. It has just been about four years. I'm now in the middle of my transformation. At the end of seven years, I will be a totally new person. So you can achieve this. You can totally transform, reinvent yourself. You can become a totally new person. If you want to become an entrepreneur, you can be an entrepreneur. You can reinvent your career. I've written many books during this time. I created more than a thousand YouTube videos. I became a YouTuber, TikToker. I reinvented all my life. I became a medium writer, online writer. I became an entrepreneur. I established my companies. I did so much since the pandemic. So you can do this. You can be somebody who is remarkable. Where will you be? I want you to capture your ideas, your thoughts, your dreams. Capture them. Please wrap this up in one minute. Please wrap it up. Now, I want you to share some of what you created with your friend. Do this in clusters of two, if possible. Share at least one of your dreams, wishes with each other and be supportive, listen to one another, and be supportive to each other, share with each other. Let's wrap it up in one minute. Both of you share, please.
let's wrap it up. Please wrap up. Here's the next puzzle. Do you know this book? Which book is about the entrepreneurial adventures of the founder of Nike? Nike. Do you know this book? Anyone? Which, one, which book is this? It's called Shoe Dog, Shoe Dog. If you haven't read it, please read this. It's an amazing book. Who has written this book? Who is the author of this book? Who is the founder of Nike? Exactly, who said it? Well done. Congratulations, thank you. This is yours. Thank you. Shoe Dog and Phil Light. Well done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the biography, everyone. Please read it if you haven't. It's an amazing book. If you are into business, entrepreneurship, this is the book you must read. How did he borrow $50 from his father? How did he create this company? And how did Nike reach $30 billion of sales. You can read all of it in this book. It's an amazing book. I want you to choose your favorites from this list. Which ones are your top seven? Please go over the list. Choose your favorite seven and take notes in your notebook. Choose your seven. Which one do you like best? Which ones are you neglecting? Have a look. Let's wrap up. If you want to be in the top 2%, top 2%, you need to go beyond your comfort zone. So if you want to be in the top 2%, the secret is you cannot be like anybody else. 98% of the population is stuck in the middle. They are insecure. They live by surviving fear. They are stuck in their workplaces. They do not think like entrepreneurs. They stick to their salary only. They stay poor. If you want to, they settle for less, they play it safe, they regret, okay? And this is your comfort zone. If you want to become a hero, you need to go beyond your comfort zone, okay? You need to really take risk. How, do you, how can you do that? You can kickstart your entrepreneurial adventures. You can live with abundance, you can go beyond fear, you can become an entrepreneur. You can reach for the stars. How do you do that? Here is your challenge for next week, OK? I want each of you to do this challenge. If you have some courage, this is your challenge, OK? I want you to save or earn an extra of 111 pounds until next Thursday evening, OK? That's your challenge. How do you do that? Give this as a puzzle to your brain, OK? You are an entrepreneur. Think like an entrepreneur. How can you make 
or earn an extra of 111 pounds until next week. Please brainstorm, write down ideas, make it practical. Come up with a realistic plan. Create as many ideas as you can now. Think widely, think creatively. How can you do this? Can you do part-time job? Can you rent out a room? Can you do Uber? Can you sell up stuff that you don't use? Can you cook at home and save more? Can you sell something online? Can you solve problems? Can you teach online? Can you coach somebody? Can you become an entrepreneur? Can you produce artwork and sell it on Etsy? Can you start your Amazon store? Can you do drop shipping? Can you invest? Can you do bake sale? Cook and sell food. What can you do? Please brainstorm possibilities. Write down what you can do. Think about your skill set, your talents, your passions. How can you turn them into money? The more ideas, the better. Please capture all your ideas. Try to come up with at least 10, 12, 20 ideas, if you can. Be creative, be entrepreneurial. Don't say it is impossible. It is perfectly possible. You can do this. But how? So you need to give your brain this possibility. This is a puzzle that you need to solve. You need to give your brain this puzzle. If you approach it as a fun puzzle, then your brain will love it. Your brain will solve it. And you'll start to think like an entrepreneur. Okay? This, this is not something really small. It's a big step. If you can pull this off, you can repeat it every week. And by the end of this year, you can be a true entrepreneur. You can achieve, become rich. You can achieve your entrepreneurial dreams. It's all about these small steps, OK? You need to build a system. Go with small steps. Have a bit of courage. Have a bit of risk taking and see what, where it goes. Yeah? So please come up with possibilities. Okay? If there are voices in your brain, no, I can't do this, forget about those voices. Take a risk. Be vulnerable. Go forward. See what happens. Even if you fail, you will learn a lot. Okay? Take the challenge. Can I see hands? Who will do this challenge until next week? I can do this. Who can say, I I'll try at least. I try my best. Okay. That's amazing. Uh, ideally, I want to see all of you raise a hand. At least you try. You are here to try, right? You are here to learn. Let's try and see what happens. Okay. So I want you to share your ideas with each other in clusters of two or three. Please share ideas. Yeah? Share with each other. Learn from each other. Can you come up with some creative ideas?
try to wrap up, please? Now, as we conclude this, if you can customize this challenge for yourself, please customize it. What do I mean? If you think that 111 pounds is too high for you, oh my God, I cannot do this. Then come up with a number that you can pull off until next week. Then write it in your notebook. How much can you make? In your notebook, please write that number. Instead of 111 pounds, can you, let's say, make 50 pounds? Write 50. Whatever you are comfortable with, write that number, please. Write it down and make it happen. The condition is, like, you need to write it down. And after you write it down, I want you to write this as a check to yourself. Write it as a check. Sign it. I want you to manifest this. Manifest this first. Believe in it first. Whatever that number is, write it down in your notebook, manifest it, and say that I will make this money until next Thursday. That's your challenge, OK? It is 40 pounds, whatever. Earn that money until next Thursday. Make it happen, OK? And then each week, try to increase this number a little bit. Okay? Do it until summer so that you establish your business, your business model, until summer. Yeah? You build something sustainable. This will be the start seed project that you can turn into a business. Okay? Think about it. You can grow this. This will be a money-making tree. You can grow your money-making trees until summer. Okay? You can start with small amounts, maybe 20 pounds. I'll start with 20 pounds this week. And then I will increase it by 10 pounds every week. 30 pounds, 40, 50 each week. Your challenge is to increase it by 10 pounds. Yeah? That means until summer, hopefully you will achieve 200 pounds. Okay? Like if you make it consistent, if you continue the challenge until summer, you'll have your business. It will be a sustainable income-making machine. It will be a tree of money-making, yeah? So establish your money-making trees, OK? Grow them. And these trees will continue to make you money even if when you are asleep. That's your goal. Even when you are asleep at night, these money-making trees will grow. They will continue making you money. That's the goal, yeah? For example, I go to bed every night. Whenever I wake up, I made automatically $2 or $3 from Medium every morning. Even if I'm sleeping, my Medium articles are continuing to make money. Yeah. The same with my YouTube channel. Whenever I go to bed every night, my YouTube channel is growing. And it grows faster and faster. Yeah. Last night, I made cl close to $1, but I will grow my channel. Next year, it will make a couple of dollars. The year after that, it will make $5. The year after that, it will make $10 every night. Yeah? So it's a money-making machine that will grow non-linearly over years. In 10 years, it will make at least $20 every evening, every night. Yeah? That's my goal. But I need 10 years to make it happen. So you need to have a long-term system and goal like this one, yeah? Have a 10-year view, grow your money-making machines, grow your businesses, and in 10 years, you'll become rich, okay? That's how you make money. You add value. You create a business. You create a business system that works for you, okay? So do it. Make it sustainable, okay? Please implement this. <laughs> Don't give up. Do it until summer and see what happens. And you can document it in your asset creation project. I did this and this and this. You can write about it in your 
asset creation project. And this is the only module that will give you credit for this. I'm the only professor in the world who gives you the opportunity to do this as part of your credit and your masters. So this is your only opportunity. Use it wisely. No other professor will give you such an opportunity. No one. I'm the only one giving you this rare opportunity. Use it wisely. So you need to get out of the rat race, make money work for you, work to learn. And the eventual goal is don't depend on your salary. Whenever you get your salary, buy assets first. You need to have assets, develop assets. The income from the assets, you need to invest them. When you get income from your assets, you need to reinvest them. You need to grow them. And never buy luxuries. Luxuries are a trap. Avoid them. Invest these. Instead of buying luxuries, you need to invest them. You need to grow them as an entrepreneur, as an investor. So, which is better? Taking $3 million in cash right now or a single magic penny that will double every day for 31 days. Let me, let's be honest, don't look at the board. Who wants three million cash? I want to see hands right now. Three million cash. I want it, right? Be honest. Okay, yeah. So the second option is who wants a magic penny that doubles every day for 31 days? Who wants the magic penny? Okay, so. You know the magic penny, yeah? Because it is magic, it doubles every day. It doubles in value, yeah? <clears throat> it's 1p in day one, yeah? In day 10, it becomes $5. And in day 20, it becomes 5,000. And then in day 29, it becomes 2.7 million. And then in day 31, it becomes 10 million, yeah? If it doubles every day, then you get 10 million versus $3 million. So you see the magic value of compounding here. We call this compounding. You need to grasp the value, magic of compounding in life. If you can grasp this, you can become the ultimate entrepreneur. You can become the internet entrepreneur. You can become rich if you grab this reality. If you don't grasp this, you'll become poor. You'll stay poor. You'll be in debt forever. If you want to get out of debt, you need to grasp this reality. How do you make money work for you? How do you grow your assets non-linearly over the long term? How do you grow your investments non-linearly over the long term? That's the secret to richness in your life. If you implement this, you'll become rich, okay? As simple as that. So this doesn't apply to money only. It applies to every aspect of your life. Let's imagine three friends. These are three friends, Larry, Scott, Brad. Let's assume they are similar. They are the same. They start in the same place, okay? Larry keeps doing what he has always done, Scott makes some small positive changes every day. For example, reads 10 pages every day, cuts 125 calories by replacing soda with water, walks an extra of 1,000 steps, starts creating his YouTube channel maybe or writing medium articles, becomes an entrepreneur, starts these small experiments, starts selling online, okay? Small positive changes. What about Brad? Brad makes a few poor choices. He buys a big TV. He enjoys more dessert. He eats more, more sugar. He takes alcohol. Okay. He has a new bar. So all of these are small negative habits, OK? So what happens at month 10? We observe them again. There are no differences. In month 10, 
they are still the same. But about month 25, then there are major, measurable differences. And in month 31, the differences are stark. What happened in month 31? Scott loses weight, gets a promotion, and raise. His marriage is thriving. He is a business person. He's an entrepreneur. He started making money online. Yeah? All positive changes. Larry is in the same space. He is feeling bitter. He is bored. He feels anxiety because he hasn't learned. He hasn't developed. And Brad, he puts on weight. He's sluggish. He's less confident. He's less productive. More withdrawn. He is unhappy. He feels anxious. He feels depressed. So that's what happens with these small habits. And that's the secret of life. That's the biggest secret of life that you will learn from today. We call this the compound effect. What's the compound effect? This is the secret of life. So this applies to health, relationships, income, happiness, and success. Every aspect of your life. If you keep making small positive habits in your life, improve yourself in these domains, then you'll become a different person in seven years. The differences will be stark. You'll be in a totally different place. You'll transform yourself in seven years. Yeah? So how do you do that? You compound. You make small, smart choices, positive choices. You apply them every day consistently over the course of seven years, a couple of years. And then you become rich, you become happy, you become productive, and you become entrepreneurial. So we call it the compound effect. It applies to every aspect of your life. So this is the secret of life, everyone. What's uncomfortable right now becomes comfortable later on. If you are uncomfortable right now, get out of your comfort zone, then you will be comfortable in the long term. If you are comfortable right now, you are in your comfort zone, in the long term, you will become very uncomfortable. That's the secret of life. Okay? So that means you need to push yourself into greatness, excellence. Get better. Strive to improve, consistently improve your life. Increase the quality of your life in these domains. If you do that consistently every day, in finance, health, personal development, relationships, and in your life overall, you'll be much happier, and much more productive, and much more successful. Okay? If you don't do this, then you'll fail. So, let's do the next exercise. You can go over the slides for the rest. It is called star exercise. Star exercise. I want you to create a list of all the things that you are good at. Open your notebook. Make a list of all the things that you are good at. The more items, the better. These are your top strengths. Okay. What are you good at? What do you love doing? I love doing this and this and this. What do you love doing? What are you really good at? Please create your list. The more items, the better. The more specific you are, the better. For example, I'm very good with in cooking green beans with olive oil, dill, garlic, and tomatoes. I'm very specific. That's my recipe. I love doing this. Yeah? So that's my favorite cooking. Yeah? I cook it really well. Make it very delicious. So what do you do? What are your unique strengths? Think of yourself as a superhero. What are your secret skills? 
what are you really good at? Make a long list. Think hard. The more specific details you capture, the better. Keep writing, please. The more things you can think of, the better. If you can be more specific, be very specific. What are you good at? What do you love doing? These are extremely important because they will become the basis of your entrepreneurship or your passion projects. If you can pull these off, use these skills, these are your excitements as well. These represent your interest, your excitement. If you capitalize on these, you can become rich. You can become extremely successful and productive. So think about how you can capitalize on these skills. These are your super skills, super strengths. These make you a superhero. So use them. If you use these, then you will achieve flow experiences. You will become super successful in the long term. So if you can challenge yourself to use these more, then you'll be a superstar. You'll become a superstar. You will attract talent. You will attract opportunities. You will attract money. If you implement this, keep implementing this, then you'll attract lots of opportunities, income, career opportunities, networks, money, capital, and of course assets. You can increase your assets. So think about how you can do that. If you have any ideas, please capture them. Can you turn some of these into money? Let's wrap it up. I want you to create a second list now. What do you wish to learn, improve, or get better at? Make a list of all the things that you want to improve, get better at. These are your areas of learning and development. Do you want to learn a new language? Do you want to learn a new instrument? Do you want to develop new skills, new knowledge, new mindsets? What are they? Please capture them. I want to get better at what? Make a list.
the more details, the better. If you can find specific things, it's better. Keep writing. Which ones are your priorities, top priorities? <coughs> Select some of them, make them your top priorities. Especially if they will bring you more income opportunities. If some of these are really critical skills, then you may want to focus on them, prioritize them. My recommendation, always include new technologies in your list. If you haven't included it, please include them. Artificial intelligence, new technologies, blockchain, metaverse, non-fungible tokens, <coughs> GPT-4, chat GPT. If you haven't put these on your list, please put them. Can you turn these into entrepreneurial opportunities? Can you increase knowledge in these new technologies? Can you improve yourself in these skills? Please add them as well. Okay. Let's wrap it up in 30 seconds. The last one, what are specific visions you would like to see happening in your life and in your career? Think about all the things that you want to make happen. What would you love to see happening? You can include your wishes, your projects, your goals, your desires, your visions. Please make a long list. You are manifesting here. What are your dreams, wishes, projects, goals, visions? Please write them, capture them in detail. The more specific, the better. The more targeted, targeted you are, the better. Keep writing, capture details, please.
out of these, which ones are your top priorities? Circle them. If some of these are your top priorities, please circle them. Focus on these top priorities, whatever they are, especially your top three. Start with top three. Include your money goals here as well. Put numbers if you can. If you have some money goals, please put numbers on them. These might be your salary goals, extra sources of income, how much do you wish to make after how many years? Please capture them in numbers. You can be ambitious. You can be specific. There is no problem with that. As long as you are trying hard to implement your vision. And you can give these as puzzles to your brain to solve. You will solve these eventually. You'll work on these problems, these puzzles. You'll challenge yourself. You will make them happen one by one. OK, let's wrap it up in 30 seconds. Now, I want you to share your results of these three lists with one another in clusters, okay? Clusters of two or three. Please share these three lists. I'm good at, I want to learn, improve myself, and I want to achieve this and this. Share at least one or two from each list with one another. Share, discuss, learn from each other.
Let's wrap it up in one minute. Please try to wrap it up. I've recorded a video on your asset creation project do's and don'ts. Watch it, okay? So that you avoid mistakes. I recorded after I witnessed lots of mistakes. So all the mistakes, you can watch them so that you can avoid them in your project. Which animation company received the highest number of Oscars? Exactly, well done. Pixar at this, thank you. Place it here. Pixar at this, yeah, well done. So let's have a visit to Pixar. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> campus just outside of San Francisco to get a rare look at the studio which has dominated the animation category at the Oscars for the last couple of years. This year of course they got Toy Story 3 and they don't let too many people in behind the scenes. Staying here on this campus, uh, every single thing was designed, modeled, built, shot, uh, like any other film only we do ours virtually. But we in live action if you want to film a grocery store you go out and find the right location and you film the grocery store. In our world, we have to design that grocery store and we have to design every last item in the grocery store and build it and create it so that it can be in the movie. Where's my nose? Well, we can really control everything from like a little bit of a, a slouch to the shoulders to shape for every frame and every syllable. There's mouths actually. Um, according to their sensibilities, just like good at like sensitive moments or, or things together. But Ann is leaving for college. College? Why does the mail land? We, we have so many emotions when we're telling the story. It was so personal to us. 18 years ago, I mean, everybody kind of knew that if Toy Story worked out, it'd be people in the company. Um, and now there are 1,200 people. Now there's at least 1,200 people, yeah. This was the building that A Bug's Life built and Steve Jobs personally oversaw the design and the construction of it. It seems to me to be a perfect fusion of kind of the Hollywood mindset, but the Silicon Valley mindset as well. Steve designed it so that there would be a lot of forced collisions of people. He always felt that the best meetings were meetings that happened spontaneously. So we heard there's something special about this office. About this office. inspire the animators to all kinds of interesting things. I know! I know what to do! At last! I'm gonna get played with! <laughs> you know, there's a scene at the end of the movie where all the toys are kind of running and they're having to push their way through trash, and I wanted the animators to be thinking about what that would be like in the hallway and I had all my animators go into it and see what it was like to actually run through all this junk. A lot of people think maybe we push a button on the computer and a movie pops out. We believe very strongly in research. There's three buttons. You're gonna to wanna to use the left button, okay? We do use computers, drawings, paintings, costuming that we've been talked about. Uh, and okay. So.
so you can explore more here is the next exercise i want you to create a poster do you can do this at home this is my poster create a li list of things all that you love these are the things that energize you put it as a poster on your room or on your desk these might be activities hobbies realms of life passions pleasures what excites you make a long list if you have any ideas to start with you can capture them right now but turn this into a poster if you can so that you can have a look and this will be like your true anchor your true north your compass this will energize you whenever you look at this list okay what could your list look like include all the things that give you joy, joy and excitement what gives you joy excitement what are your passions create it turn it into a poster that's number one number two i want you to go back to your childhood when you were a child imagine that you are let's say six years old you haven't yet started school let's say okay you are at home just playing you don't have any adult responsibilities what were you doing as a child remember those moments i want you to go back to your childhood what were you doing as a child when you were let's say five years old maybe four years old six years old what were you doing how would you spend your time remember those times would you play all day about what what would you play on would you draw things would you dance were you singing were you acting were you doing puzzles what were you doing i want you to remember yourself what did you create what did you love creating go back to those childhood moments if you can refresh your memories please capture those moments in your notebook now what were you doing go back to your childhood memories how were you spending your time throughout the day what were you excited about i want to, you to capture those memories as a child when did you feel really happy excited <clears throat> what were you doing during those moments try to reconstruct those memories capture those memories on paper what were you doing then did you love drawing did you love telling stories did you love dancing did you love drawing things what did you love playing with other kids did you love spending time in nature how would you play capture those memories these are important why because then after you started school a series of unfortunate things happened unfortunately you lost your creativity you lost your childhood when you started school systems schools are terrible school systems are terrible they standardize you they put it into boxes schools are like prisons i want you to get out of those prisons those standardized jobs and this continues in your workplaces as well when you start your job in a workplace they will treat you like a prisoner believe me you need to go out of those cubicles those prison systems you need to reclaim your independence as a child with your childhood spread how were you creative how were you free and independent as a child go back to those days reclaim them with courage with vulnerability i love doing this why don't i do the same for example i love keeping notebooks doodling 
I started doodling again after my 40s. I turned it into a venture. I turned it into a book. I made lots of money with it. So go back to your childhood. Turn it into a hobby. Reclaim that hobby. Reclaim your childhood creativity. Okay? And be free. Alongside your career, after, let's say, 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., you need to reclaim your individual creativity. What do you love to do? Go back, reclaim that, and do it. Spend time on it, especially on the weekends or in the evenings. Okay. So I want you to think about how you can do that and put down at least one action in your notebook. How will you reclaim your childhood creativity? Please write down at least one action you can do practically. It can be something small, but do it. What is that? How can you reclaim that childhood creativity? Unfortunately, educational systems killed your creativity. Your workplaces will also kill your creativity if you are not careful. You need to be really careful. Reclaim your creativity, your independence, your independent spirit, your courage. Reclaim it. So give yourself opportunities to be original. Give yourself challenges. How do you become original? To be original, you need to create thousands of bad ideas, make mistakes, and then iterate them relentlessly, combine them with one another until they are more original, and then you come up with several promising prototypes. Combine your ideas, turn them into prototypes, implement them, grow them, and then uh, you'll create something original. So you create tens, hundreds of ideas, capture them always in your notebook, connect those ideas together, form new linkages, connect unrelated ideas, turn them into products, turn them into new opportunities, businesses, and turn them into money. That's how you become an entrepreneur. That's how you become an artist. So here is your adventure. Can you turn five pounds into 5,000? Imagine that you have just five pounds. Can you turn five pounds into 5,000? I want you to brainstorm. Can you do that? How can you do it? Think of some ideas. You have just five pounds. You want to turn it into 5,000. Can you do that? It's like magic. But it works. It is doable. It's not impossible. I have done it myself. So you can do this. But how? I want you to give this as a puzzle to your brain and try to solve this. Can you come up with out-of-the-box thinking, original ideas to make this happen? How can you make it happen? The more ideas, the better. Your brain will stop you, and it will say, this is bullshit. You can't do it. You need to resist your brain and challenge it and think like a child creatively. Think outside the box. How can I make this happen as an entrepreneur, as a creative person? I'm a very creative person. I'm entrepreneurial. I'm resourceful. I can do this. But how can you solve it? Please create some ideas. Write them down. You can also exchange ideas, steal ideas from one another. Do it in groups if you want. Or do it alone, as you wish. The more ideas, the better. Get ideas flowing. Get your creative juices on paper. You need to think like an entrepreneur. Okay? Get ideas. Try to get some original ideas. How can you do this?
platinum. That's a great idea. Why don't you try it? Exactly. Exa like you are on the right path. You know, you can make hundreds of dollars using ChatGPT. You can sell, create products, digital products, ebooks, sell them to companies. You can consult companies on these. You can sell your expertise, definitely. Let me tell my story. Five years ago, I started with my notebook, one of my notebooks, and with a pencil. This notebook, a similar one, it cost me about four, four pounds, four and a half pounds, five years ago. You could buy something like this, four and a half pounds, yeah? And then 50p, I bought a pencil, okay? I started doodling every day. I went back to my childhood. I loved doodling. I doodled every day for one year. I turned this into a book. I applied for entrepreneurship fund at UEA. UEA has a scheme for staff members as well as for students. If you want to become an entrepreneur, you just apply to UEA funds. I applied for this fund. It was a competitive prize. I got the entrepreneurial prize for staff members. They gave me 5,000. I built a business out of this. It was based on doodling and digital products. I grew my business. My book now is sold in 14 countries. I created other books as well. I started writing on Medium as well. I turned it into a thriving business. And I made thousands of pounds out of this business. It all started with doodling. You thought, can you do this? Yes, you can. It is possible. I'll show you another example. This man made more than 200,000 just through cat cartoons. He established a website. Which site is this? He was on Shark Tank. Do you know this guy? He created cat drawings. This is the guy's uh, website. I want to draw a cat for you.com. You can go there. I want to draw a cat for you.com. So, if you Google this, let's go to YouTube, Shark Tank. He was on Shark Tank, okay? I want to draw a cat for you. If you say that, you'll see that he became very successful. But as you can see, he started with nothing. He just followed his dreams, his passions. So this is the mindset that I want you to have. Let's say you want to make a million dollars a year. You need to give this as a puzzle, as a problem to your brain. Think very practically. If you, I want to make, let's say, one million a year, that means I have to help so many people that it generates about 2,700 hundred dollars every day if you divide it every day you need to make 2700 right what if every person you helped gave you one dollar you would need to help 2700 people what if they gave you ten dollars then you would need to help 270 people it's a mathematical problem you need to solve this puzzle so here is the deal if you want to become a millionaire You'll just need to replicate, come up with a formula that adds a lot of value for a lot of people. If you can sell it, if you learn how to sell it, then you'll become a millionaire. Okay. That's how you become a millionaire. How many people can you help? How can you help them? Can you design a product for them? Can you sell it to hundreds of people? Can you sell it to thousands of people? Can you become a bestseller? How many people can you help? How will you reach those people? And how will you help them exactly? How will you create enormous value for these people? Think about that. This is your problem. If you can solve that problem, then you can become a millionaire. It's as simple as that. So all of this is like a puzzle. I want you to read books on how to become rich. Read these books. 
they will give you so many more ideas and mindsets. Learn from these books. Master their mindsets. If you want to become millionaire, you need to do, this, do these 15 things immediately. Do them as well. Okay? So I'll finish with some more episodes on Shark Tank. There is a book called Entrepreneurial Revolution. This is the book. I want you to read it if you can. It will give you so many ideas. It says you need to do these things to become an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur. Can you make some calls, pick up the phone, send emails, arrange meetings? Can you save at least 10% of your income? Can you stop spending time with negative people who bring you down? Spend time with positive people who will inspire you, bring you up. Carry $1,000 on you at all times so that you become accustomed to this idea of abundance. I have lots of money. Money is flowing. Opportunities are flowing to me. You need to subconsciously become rich. You need to manifest become rich. And if you generate opportunities, networks, products, services, you will keep growing, keep investing in your stuff, you will be exponentially rich in the long term. It's all about attracting these opportunities. Okay? So have lunches with people who will inspire you, who will help you. Develop your network. There are three books on starting your own business. Read them. And watch Shark Tank. Read the inspirational, watch the inspirational stories of these people, entrepreneurs. So becoming an entrepreneur is not that hard. You need to look ahead, think of a problem, solve that specific problem, follow your passions, make a prototype product, block the doctors, use your gut feeling, tell people and demo, sell it. If you can do these things, you can also become an entrepreneur. It's not that hard. You just need to try and fail, fail again, iterate, learn from your failures until you start succeeding. So, let me finish with two episodes. Jack Stans, he's a kid entrepreneur. Next into the tank is a kid entrepreneur who wants to help other kids fulfill their entrepreneurial aspirations. Hi Sharks, my name is Jack Bonneau. I'm the founder and CEO of Jack Stands and Marketplaces and I'm from Denver, Colorado. Hi Sharks, I'm Steve Bonneau. I'm Jack Stan. I work for Jack. Sharks, I'm seeking $50,000 in exchange for 10% of my company. I'm 10 years old, but when I was eight years old, I really wanted a Lego set, but it cost $400. The good news was my dad said I could have it. But he'd have to pay for it with his own money. So, I did what most of you probably would do. I started my own lemonade stand. After 12 weeks, I made $900 after expenses. Wow. Learned some valuable lessons, and yes, I got my Lego Death Star. <laughs> and the experience is exactly why I created Jack Stands and Marketplaces. Jack Stands in Marketplaces provides kids and their families opportunities to learn about entrepreneurship, business, financial literacy, while having fun and making some money. We provide everything except their mood and their enthusiasm. Jack Stands offers kids the opportunity to sell lemonade and other drinks. We offer kids the opportunity to sell more than just lemonade. Jack's Marketplaces provides young entrepreneurs the opportunity to sell their products in authentic and great marketplaces and have kids sell those great products and tell the inspirational stories of these young entrepreneurs. So Sharks, our challenge and question to you is, who wants to make money? While inspiring our nation's youth in entrepreneurship. He got an investment, he became successful. Let's look at these two teenagers. So watch these episodes of Shark Tank and then I want you to think about your own entrepreneurial idea. Imagine yourself presenting at Shark Tank. What would you present? Imagine your business pitch. So let's say you are an entrepreneur, you have that burning passion to create something inspiring, original, useful. What is it? What is your unique talent, unique value proposition? Which problem are you solving? For whom? Why should people bother 
to pay for you? Why should they buy from you? Why should they buy your product or service? Give this as a puzzle to your brain. What is your secret sauce that others cannot do? How can you become an entrepreneur? So think about it at home. If you have any seed ideas, please put them. What is your idea if you would present on Shark Tank? What would you present? I want you to capture your initial thoughts and then we finish today, okay? What could be your entrepreneurial idea or pitch? Please write it down. If you have any core idea, please write it down right now. Can you put it into action? Can you develop this into a Shark Tank pitch? I want you to watch a lot of Shark Tank episodes this weekend, okay? Over the weekend, go to YouTube. You can also go to Netflix. Netflix has this Shark Tank. Watch all the episodes of Shark Tank. Watch them, and then think about if you are invited to Shark Tank as an entrepreneur, what would you present? Create your presentation, okay? Create your pitch, and that pitch can be your asset creation project. You can turn it into your asset creation project. And you can implement it. You can start selling right away. And you can grow your business until summer. So try to do it. If you can pull it off, grow it until summer, then you can document it, put it in your portfolio, OK? So please do it. And I wish all of you best of luck in your entrepreneurial ventures. So thank you very much, everyone. I wish you a great weekend. I'll see you next week in our uh, seminars. Thanks a lot. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you.